Hey there everybody, this is Dr. Sean Zager from Paloma, here to talk to you today about the connections between our thyroid and adrenal function and sometimes between our thyroid and adrenal dysfunction. I'll start by talking about these two very important glands in the body. Um, the thyroid gland, as you may or may not know, is a butterfly-shaped gland that uh, sits right in the front of the, uh, the neck here um, that produces thyroid hormone and really is central in determining our metabolism. It, you can kind of think about thyroid um, function as the engine in our bodies. The adrenal glands are glands, there's two of them, and they sit on top of our kidneys. They're walnut-shaped, and they produce various hormones. Um, the inside of the adrenal gland is called the medulla, and there are several hormones that are produced there, such as epinephrine that you may have heard of uh, before. Um, but what I really want to focus on here is uh, the function of the adrenal cortex, which is the outer rind of the adrenal gland, uh, which produces a hormone called DHEA, for one, that is a precursor to testosterone and estrogen and helps to regulate cortisol, which is uh, the main hormone that I want to talk about today from the adrenal gland. Um, cortisol, the name itself comes from uh, cortex, from the adrenal cortex and where it's produced. And cortisol is our stress hormone. It um, is really meant to be released when we're in times of acute stress to uh, mobilize uh, the resources in our body to create energy, uh, to ultimately be able to counter, manage, or avoid the stress at hand. Now, it's important to say at this point that humans are the only species on Earth that experience chronic stress, right? Uh, if you take the example of a zebra running away from a lion on the savanna in Africa, when that lion begins to chase the zebra, cortisol will be produced along with other hormones, um, and it will help the, that zebra to have the uh, wherewithal and the resources to run. And ultimately, that cortisol production will come to an end, either because when the zebra is back with its family, relaxing later in the day, or when the zebra is dead because the lion got it. Now, humans, we have the capacity for chronic stress that, that uh, can last for hours or days or, or a lifetime for some people. And um, in these cases, cortisol hormone can be chronically elevated, which can cause a host of problems. Um, and we'll talk about that. Um, so I really want to focus here on the relationship between our thyroid hormone function and um, the our stress response as regulated by cort the cortisol production from the adrenals, as I was just talking about. Um, so first of all, just want to say that this is another reason why it's so important to take good care of our thyroids, right? If a person is walking around with untreated, undiagnosed, or mismanaged hypothyroidism, um, it leads over time to increases in cortisol production. Now, uh, when chronic, this can lead to a lot of um, symptoms that can be really disabling for people. And this can be sleep disturbance, weight gain, um, increased blood pressure, decreased uh, ability to regulate blood sugar, decreased bone mineral density, muscle weakness, um, brain fog, mood swings, anxiety, and probably most notably progressive fatigue um, that, that can become profound. Um, so I'll just nail down one more time that if, if you are a person who has hypothyroidism or um, suspects that you might have hypothyroidism, really important to get in with a knowledgeable practitioner who can make sure that your thyroid is managed appropriately uh, so that not only is your thyroid gland functioning the way that it should, but also the rest of your body, which is so influenced by the thyroid, uh, by your thyroid hormone function is working well including your uh, adrenal glands and, and your cortisol balance. Now, taking good care of our adrenal glands and our cortisol regulation um, is just so important as well to, to our overall sense of wellness uh, and 
of course, to our thyroid function. When cortisol levels are chronically elevated because often of chronic stress that is really not managed well, it creates an inflammatory response in the body, and this disrupts the normal function of what's called our hypothalamic pituitary pathway in our brain that has um, con- that it controls so many of the hormones in our body, uh, including thyroid hormone. And when cortisol is chronically elevated, our thyroid hormone production really goes down. So as you can tell from what I'm saying, there's really an inverse relationship uh, here where when our thyroid function is low, our cortisol levels tend to run high and vice versa. When cortisol is high, our thyroid levels tend to run low and it leads to uh, really uh, the symptoms that I mentioned before and a sense of feeling unwell. So what to do about, uh, you know, to to really help to manage this and uh, keep the balance in our adrenal glands and, and hence our, our, our thyroid hormone production. So first, I always, with every patient I see, I always talk about what I call the four pillars of health. Um, this would be diet, exercise, sleep, and stress management. You can spin your wheels about medications and um, herbs and supplements, um, but until you get these four pillars really addressed and in in some balance, none of the rest of the stuff is going to matter. Um, so with diet, you know, it's really trying to avoid known food triggers. Everybody, you know, is different in this way. Gluten and dairy being uh, being the classics and the most common, you know, food intolerances that we see. Um, but you know, really staying to an anti, sticking to an anti-inflammatory diet uh, with minimal unhealthy fats or refined sugars that can be inflammatory. Um, getting regular aerobic exercise, you know, there, there is good study out there that shows that when we do get good, uh, moderate, uh, at least moderate intensity exercise, um, we, while we do experience a bump in cortisol production to help, help us be able to do that exercise in the long run, this helps our body become better at regulating cortisol. So when there are other stresses in our life, uh, we, those, uh, those of us who exercise have more of a capacity to um, keep cortisol levels uh, at an even keel. Good sleep, um, of course, this is just good sleep hygiene, making sure you're staying away from screens in a couple hours, a couple hours before bed, um, really sticking to a consistent sleep schedule, which is really important for cortisol balance and hormone and thyroid hormone balance, um, and then very much relatedly stress management. Uh, we all have our own ways of doing this. The important thing is to have your own toolbox that is deep and broad and that you can draw from. Um, I often encourage patients to have both active forms of stress management, like exercise, um, and also more passive quieting forms of stress management that might be deep breathing exercises or guided imagery, meditation, listening to calming music. Um, for some people, it's taking a hot Epsom salt bath before bed, which obviously would help with sleep and, and certainly dials down stress. So these four pillars really all go together, and I'm, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention them uh, here as we talk about you know, a therapeutic approach to this kind of hormone balancing. Now, it's fair to say that if there is ongoing inflammation in really any system of the body, um, it leads to a stress stress it leads to a stress response. Excuse me, um, from the adrenals and increased cortisol production, which, um, as we mentioned, can have its own uh, deleterious effects. So to cure to care for the adrenals, um, you really need to care for all the systems of the body. And this just goes back to making sure that your GI tract is working well. Not only are you avoiding food uh, triggers or inflammatory foods, but making sure that uh, working working with your uh, healthcare provider to make sure that there's no, uh, what I would call dysbiosis uh, in the GI system, meaning that the ecology of the gut is off balance with any overgrowth of bacteria or yeast or parasites, um, et cetera. Um, this means uh, good immune support, making sure your immune function is working well, uh, minimizing exposure to environmental toxins, um, 
so all of this goes together, and I think this starts to, you know, uh, inform a holistic approach uh, to our healthcare uh, and certainly to our hormone balance. Um, beyond this, um, there can be some herbs and supplements that are helpful for cortisol balance. And again, I'll just say, of course, a big part of this is making sure that your thyroid hormone is, 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 uh, your thyroid function is, is well cared for, uh, working with your healthcare practitioner to, uh, assure that you're getting the right thyroid care. Um, and you know, very, very important for your cortisol balance, as we've said, but moving into these options for supplements or herbs, I'll just mention a couple. First of all, um, for some people, actually supplementing with DHEA, which is uh, that other hormone produced by the adrenal cortex aside from cortisol, um, if cortisol levels um, are off balance, uh, particularly if cortisol levels are high, and there are ways to test for DHE levels as well, you can work with your healthcare provider on that. If DHEA levels are low, which we often see because the two help to regulate each other when the cortisol levels are high and unregulated in that way, DHEA levels are often low. Uh, supplementing with some DHEA can be helpful to bring down cortisol levels and at the same time helping to give a little pep in the step and, and some increased energy. Um, in addition, there is a whole class of herbs called adaptogenic herbs that are used for uh, adrenal support and have been used for adrenal support for millennia. Um, in general, this is one of my favorite class of, of uh, herbs. Um, actually, I'm drinking some adaptogenic herbal tea right here. Um, in general, adaptogens are herbs that are they're really ancient tonics that have been used all over the world um, and really used to improve our capacity to manage stress, both physical and mental. Um, Adaptogens help, can help to support energy, mental clarity, immune defense, sleep quality, um, and really an overall sense of sustained wellness. So some examples of, and I should say these adaptogenic herbs, there's a lot of overlap in their um, effects, but um, you know there are many and they all have different features. Uh, in broad strokes, uh, I'll mention that some of the more stimulating um, adaptogenic herbs include rhodiola, uh, cordyceps, which is actually a mushroom, um, Asian or Korean ginseng, also called uh, Panax ginseng, um, Siberian ginseng, also called Eleuthero, uh, Astragalus, Schizandra. These are examples of some more stimulating uh, adaptogenic herbs. Some other more calming um, adaptogenic herbs would include ashwagandha from the um, Indian subcontinent. Uh, holy basil would be another one. Um, I should mention too that adaptogenic herbs also include things like turmeric, licorice, uh, even goji berry. Um, and so, you know, I would encourage you to work with your healthcare provider to talk about how to um, most appropriately for you incorporate these uh, into your um, healthcare regimen or even into your diet. Um, some of these herbs uh, can be used for cooking, meal preparation, smoothies, what have you. Um, so anyway, in sum, I just want to say that I think that thyroid and adrenal hormone balance is as central as anything you could talk about with your healthcare practitioner to your sense of energy, to your um, sense of stress management, uh, to your sleep quality, uh, and, and so many other uh, of our experiences in our body and in our health. So please work with your healthcare provider um, to make sure that you're taken care of uh, in an optimal way. And uh, of course, uh, we're always here at Paloma to help you out. I hope this has been helpful and happy holidays to everybody. Bye-bye.